hello and welcome everyone to the Leaders of Leader podcast. My name is Diana Daniels, YPO Greater Europe, and I am the CEO and founder of Coral Group Working in Telecommunications, Labor and Financial Inclusion. And that is my total pleasure to be hosting the Leader of Leader podcast today, brought you by the YPO Leadership Development Network. Today, I am very happy to welcome into our podcast, Gerardo Segat, who has been a YPO member since 2013 and is currently a founder and mentoring officer of the YPO North Star chapter, as well as chair of the YPO Gold Italy and founder and chapter chair of the YPO Southern Switzerland. Welcome, Gerardo. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Thank you for inviting me. And hello to all your listeners and, uh, and viewers. Thank you, Gerardo. Listen, after being an entrepreneur for about more than 15 years in the family office industry, Gerardo has been a leadership coach since 2015. He created Preludes, a coaching program for leaders, their families, and business to impact their personal and professional lives meaningfully, insightfully. And also he created Vivate, an original format of public debate for decision makers and Gerardo also curates a, a column in the Leader in the Mirror for one of the leading Swiss magazines. Gerardo has been super active in education in Switzerland, where, where actually he is living now. And he is the uh, concept and content creator of the CLID Center of Leadership Impact and Development and the lecturer of the Postgraduate Certificate of Advanced Studies in Leaderness, where the, actually he personally designed it. So Gerardo. Oh my gosh, you're a super achiever. <laughs> I, I really want to ask you about this postgraduate certificate program in leaderness that uh, it seems that it places the focus on how to be a leader. And if you would be so kind to share with us a little bit about what is the driving forces about this initiative. Yeah, well, let, let me first uh, start by saying uh, why the suffix ness to leader. Um, the suffix ness has actually two meanings. Uh, number one meaning is extensive impact uh, and extensive uh, legacy uh, to organization and to people. And the second, the second uh, meaning is in fact uh, uh, continuous uh, improvement, it continuous growth, continuous uh, learning, going beyond, staying out of the comfort zone. Uh, so that is the meaning. Now, to do that, uh, you actually have to move the focus onto the state of being a leader rather than state of uh, knowing or rather than state of behaving. Okay. So this is reflected into the driving forces. The driving forces of leaderness are being excellent, being authentic, and being purposeful. Okay. All three are being excellent. Uh, is with regards to obviously skills uh, and abilities. Uh, the uh, authentic is with regards to values, identity, and purposeful is with regards to the other extensions of being a leader. Uh, so family, uh, work, uh, but also communities, nature, planet, etc. Uh, now this. Uh, those forces are driving forces, but the more you respond to them, they also become pulling forces. So they actually pull you towards uh, towards the, 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 all, all three of them. Um, so I think that, you know, as you can see, there are shifts, shift from uh, input to output, so to impact, shift to knowing, behaving, uh, from knowing and behaving to being. And I, uh, it was my opinion that those shifts require a new word rather than trying to characterize leadership, just a new word and the word is leaderness. So if, if, if I can understand correctly, you know, you, you've seen this shift in leadership from what you call, you know, the knowledge and the behavior and the being an impact, then if, this shift requires to connect with this inner being, this inner leader that you're telling us. H how do we do that? Uh, well, first, uh, let me tell you that I think we were born connected. Human being, a leader being, were born connected. 
And then because of events, education, other various, you know, tax, belief, religion, etc. Uh, so often they get they disconnect. So we need to restore connection. And to restore connection, it means two movements. So human being towards leader being and leader being towards human being. Um, how do you do that? Uh, you do that by continuously responding to those three evolutionary forces of leaderness that I mentioned before, excellence, authenticity, and purpose. Uh, and the more you respond, the more they stretch. So for example, excellence becomes distinctive excellence. Uh, so genius, for example, is an example. Uh, and authenticity becomes deep authenticity. So we're talking about fragilities. And you see, uh, fragilities, uh, genius, are places of connection. They are places where human being and leader being are connected. Um, the end result is leaderness. Or if you want to say it in a different way, uh, is humanized leadership, uh, substantial. I like it more leaderness than humanized lead, uh, leadership. It kind of feel a little bit contradictory to me. If there is no connection, then you need sustainable development goals. Then you need coaches and so on. I see. So what, what I love of what you, Gerardo, what you are doing is that, I mean, your purpose is humanized leadership, right? And uh, so when you talk about discovering your human logic and uh, your human magic, Basically, what I would love us to, to understand a little bit more about what does it mean and what does it make that difference in, in these days? Uh, well, human, human magic means uh, unleashing your distinctive excellence, uh, unleashing uh, our deep authenticity and pursuing our existential purpose. That's human magic. You know, when all of all three of them happen, that's human magic. And you know, unleashing it, you know, intentionally, uh, so so that they are intentionally present and aligned with our actions, and in all our extension of being, not only self, uh, ourselves, but also our families, our businesses, our communities, etc. Um, why does it make a difference? It makes a big difference because uh, human magic disrupts defensive behaviors. Uh, and we see extensively defensive behaviors because, well, number one, our mind is already defensive. You know, it is, this is the way it has been created. You know, if you think about a very simple, stupid thing, you know, just think about tickling. You know, if I tickle you, you know, this generates a reaction and that's the mind, you know, it's a protective, uh, it's a protective reaction. So the mind is already set up like that. Then you have uncertainty, then you have loneliness, a, a class, you know, a very common state for a leader. And then you have these big mega trends, you know, globalization, di digitalization, and how we also have COVID. All of these are threats. You know, and all of these uh, determine uh, these defensive reactions, uh, and it is extensively present. You know, uh, you know, skipping, uh, attacking, uh, blaming. Uh, you know, even anxiety is a is a defensive reaction. So, uh, human magic just simply says to you, there is no need to defend. Okay. And therefore, it disrupts these defensive reactions. Uh, and at the same time, you know, when you are in this state, then the consequences is also uh, that um, uh, it basically nourishes our own ground and those of uh, our stakeholders and allows flowers to blossom. Okay, our flower and those of other stakeholders. And also, uh, you know, somehow it plants the seed this way, it plants the seed for, you know, big, nice desire changes 
uh, to to happen. Um, yes, it also leads to outstanding performance, and it also leads to profits. But you know, in leaderness, profit is the consequence; is not the focus. That's also why I think a different word is better, you know, rather than leadership. So if, if I understand correctly, then Gerardo, uh, you believe that showing vulnerability means showing your authenticity to the world and that in business, basically that will create a cohesive team uh, with a deep sense of belonging, either the, also not only belonging, but motivation and performance. So as leaders, how do we find the strength to be vulnerable in this way? Well, first, uh, let me tell you, is, it is my belief, but there are also studies uh, and research of, on that specific, uh, on the effect of showing vulnerability. Um, showing vulnerability is an intentional choice that has an element of daring, surely, and that's personal, uh, but also has an, an element of awareness. Uh, typically, when you look at vulnerability and showing vulnerability, the awareness that you, you know, instinctively think about is, okay, what's going to happen if I do it? Uh, now, what I'm suggesting is to actually think about what's going to happen if you don't do it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, to this, I want to mention a case that I remember uh, some time ago, I watched a uh, the TED talk of uh, a YPO member called uh, uh, Jason Raid. Uh, his TED talk was about uh, the suicide of his son. Okay. And he was talking about uh, the impact of his Superman attitude on this. Okay. So, uh, you know, be aware of the consequences if you don't do it. And also be aware of the opportunities. Yeah, if you do it, the opportunities is very, you know, is very clear, simple. The opportunity is to find human magic, because at the end of the day, showing vulnerability allows you, well, number one, to reach distinctive excellence. You know, vulnerability can be flipped into distinctive excellence. So you find distinctive excellence. It is the authenticity. And often behind the vulnerability lies your purpose. Okay, so you actually, you know, vulnerability, showing vulnerability is at the center of, of leaderness. So it is the, the key to human magic and it is the key uh, to the connection between leader being and human being. Uh, now, the, the last opportunity, incredible opportunity, uh, vulnerability is a superpower in terms of uh, trust and connection. And I want to quickly mention to you two uh, experiences I have. Okay, I, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I created a speech about vulnerability, and uh, uh, in the past I've been invited uh, by chapters to talk about vulnerability, but I also do that outside work here. Okay, so in uh, uh, one of the cases, I was invited by one of the uh, leading HR consultancy firm. It was uh, two months after COVID. Okay, so nobody was kind of used to virtual meetings and so on. It was an event where, you know, the participants were online, virtual. Nobody, I didn't know any one of these people. And uh, in that event, I talk about leaderness, but then I also uh, talk about my vulnerability, which is about a mental disorder. And I talk about this vulnerability, and then I ask people uh, to, to, to talk, not to talk, but to mention what is their deep vulnerability. And in that case, I told them to do that by messaging privately me on Zoom. So I said this, so I talked about my vulnerability. I asked people to answer for one minute, silence. Okay, after one minute arrives a message, you know? And obviously people couldn't see. And then after that, 
another message, another message, another message, another message. So, you know, many messages, but with unbelievable content, you know, things that you, you know, you, you think is impossible to say or to mention, it was mentioned to me an unknown person just after half an hour. Okay. Wow. So that's the power of the trust power of vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, the last, you know, the second example I want to mention to you, which is more about connection, is I was in London to give this speech to the Greater London chapter. So whilst going to London, I was talking to uh, somebody of the board of a Swiss bank. And she said to me, come and do this speech to our board in London. Okay, so I went in person to give this speech to the board of a Swiss bank in London. And by the way, there were also other offices, our boards of other offices connected. Okay, people came in, maybe it was organized at the last minute. They didn't know probably the reason why they were there. They didn't know me. Nobody said hello. They were coming in, just chatting between themselves. Okay, so I started the speech. Same thing, after half an hour, you know, I told them to write an opposite and this, you know, it ended up with people uh, just opening up, crying, hugging each other. Uh, and I received a message two days later from the CEO telling me, you know, we're gonna change things, how things are organized in this bank uh, for a more inclusive world. Oh my God, so powerful. Very, yes. very powerful. So if, um, if you will give, you know, like three key takeaways that maybe you could share with uh, other leaders to help them develop their leadership skills, what will be those three key takeaways that you will give them? Well, I will give you, I will give you and them uh, a takeaway for each of the driving forces. So on excellence, the takeaway is Vulnerability is flippable into the pinnacle of strength. Uh, if you just look at it in the right way, and if you just approach and adapt to the right methodology. The second, uh, second takeaway on authenticity, I would say to you, make you happen more than make big happen. And stay out of the comfort zone, okay? And here, I just want to mention an example for the people in YPO, forum, okay? Forum is fantastic. Number one reason for membership, okay? It starts as a discomfort, but then it becomes comfort. So don't sit on the forum, on your forum for many years. People tend to think, ah, oh, you've been in, in that forum for 10 years, it's fantastic. No, that's comfort. You know, you need to get out, change forum shuffle forums, go into micro forums, do something different, okay? And on purpose, uh, the takeaway is to find purpose, you need self-awareness, okay? So uh, the takeaway is, you know, look actively for that self-awareness and look uh, even when things go well within your family, within your business. Okay, don't sit there and wait for the disrupting event to happen. Okay, because the chances that you are might be not in your right path uh, uh, are there without you realizing it. I truly love that. Thank you so much for uh, amazing knowledge that you're giving us. And um, if you want to offer maybe some resources that you would recommend to someone also looking into gain an insight into leaderness, what, what resources can you offer them? Uh, well, uh, one day I will, brave enough to, I will be brave enough to write a book. Uh, until then, uh, I think there is plenty of leaderness uh, within our YPO. So uh, look out for people, for chapters, for events, for initiatives. I mean, your podcast, the guests of your podcast, I've seen many uh, leaderless minds there. Um, um, I want to mention maybe specifically uh, one book 
uh, it's a book written by a YPR uh, whose name is Amar Charani. The, the, the title is Purpose Zone. And okay. the second thing I want to mention within YPO is uh, um, also uh, the uh, program, the, the new complementary program, uh, training program, IV for YPO, uh, which is, it, it runs uh, basically five side chats, uh, two, I think twice a week. Uh, have a look at that because that also uh, it is 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 full of leaderness minds and full of practical insights on excellence, authenticity, and purpose. And those insights are actually uh, sliding doors. So that's within YPO. Outside YPO, I would uh, mm, outside YPO, in terms of books, uh, I would give you a couple of names. One is uh, Brené Brown. Brené Brown is number one uh, researcher on uh, wholehearted leadership. Uh, it has a, a so any book written by Brené Brown, in particular, uh, daring greatly, and she has this magical combination between data, science, and emotions. Um, and that's one book, that's one name. The second name I would give you is Hubert Jolie. Hubert Jolie is the former CEO of Best Buy. He's written a book called uh, uh, The Art of Business. And that is uh, particularly good if you like cases, because not only he talks about Best Buy, but also he talks about other cases and other CEOs also. Um, and then I'm going to give you, so those in terms of books, then in terms of, if you like, frameworks, um, well, uh, you can check out uh, Ikigai, which is a Japanese word that means flower. Ikigai is a framework to find your purposeful activity. And it combines aspects of excellence, authenticity, it talks about passions, it talks about skills, and so on, and it combines them to find uh, your purpose. And the other framework I, I invite you to check is uh, the 12-step uh, methodology, which is a framework that has nothing to do with leadership. It has to do with uh, dependencies. It is often used, it is mainly used by uh, those associations that deal with dependencies. So AA with alcohol, drugs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it is, in fact, a methodology to flip a vulnerability, which is the dependency, into something positive. So have a look at that. And in particular, I invite you to check the power of remedying what you did before. Um, and, and then there, there are plenty of studies also. Uh, I, if you like data, again, uh, maybe I, I want to mention one. Uh, one study uh, that was done by uh, Deloitte, Monitor Deloitte, which is called the Purpose Premium, and it gives you plenty of figures of the effect of purpose and leaderness in general uh, into, uh, into business. Amazing. Oh, my gosh, there you have it. That's completely generosity, you know. Thank you for all this wisdom that you're sharing with us. Uh, and uh, are you ready? Because this section is where will help us to know a little bit uh, more about you, the person. Right. So it's going to be fun, I promise. You just need to tell one word that comes to your mind whenever I tell you the next 10 rapid fire questions. Ready? Go. So tea or coffee? Uh, coffee. Hi, yes. That's good. <laughs> <Anyway. Coffee. laughs> coffee, yes, I'm one of those. What about uh, morning or night? Night. Ah, very good. So, time, love, or money? Mm, love. Always love wins. I have to say this. What about um, what was your childhood career? What What did you want to be when you were a, when you were a kid? Interior designer. An interior designer. Yeah. Well, don't <laughs> <once>. <laughs> and, I, and I ended up in a completely different direction. But also chef, interior designer or chef? 
Uh, Jeff, wow. And um, what is the best career advice that you ever received? Wow. Um, the best career advice. Uh, uh, well, move on to the next one. It will come in my mind. <laughs> we were in what's the best career advice that you ever got? You think about uh, it? Best career advice is follow your dreams. Beautiful. It's true. Super true. So if it's not in Swiss that you live right now, where would you like to live? Uh, I love Spain. I, you see, you're one of my... And I also, they say Spain, if I want to be closer, but I also love Japan. Ah, nice. Many times Very to Japan. Nice. So what was the last book that you read? The last book that I read is is actually uh, The Art of Business by Uber Julie. Yeah, very good. This question is tricky. So tell me, what are you afraid of? Talking about vulnerabilities, huh? Yeah. Um, I'm afraid to lose my kids. I understand that. And is there something that keeps you awake at night? No, nothing. Nope. I actually sleep very well, irrespective, <laughs> of, irrespective of whatever happens around. That is, that is so good to know. Is there anything that makes you wake up? Like you're ready to wake up to do something? What is that? Uh, the, the clock. <laughs> 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 the clock lets me wake up. Uh, oh my God. Well, thank yeah, you so much, Gerardo. <laughs> you are, you, you know, I, I really love what you are doing. Um, you have discovered this podcast session already that Gerardo is so focused in bringing the most human side of all leaders. And now he's dedicating his passion and creativity to building a stage performance. And, uh, and that is showing that brings, uh, this show that it brings together coaching and theater production to connect with individuals, leaders, and uh, and also to how to be a better human being. I know that you're planning to show, to, to get this show uh, during World Leader Summits and, and, and also multinational conventions. And I truly cannot wait to see what else you have in your hat for us, Gerardo, because you are an amazing leader. So wrapping up, please tell us what will be your call to action for the leaders? Well, uh, you know, my call to action is to um, raise up from uh, the underwater world that we are living in, uh, where we need, uh, where we actually need masks, we need oxygen, we need protective suit, and uh, just simply be extraordinary individuals. That's, that is an amazing advice. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gerardo, for being our guest in the Leadership Leader Podcast today. And I want to invite the rest of you to please come and watch our next episode of Leaders of Leaders. My name is Diana Daniels, and I'll be happy to be with you once more in our next episode. Please stay tuned. See you soon. Ciao, ciao.